In this episode, we drive from Whitehorse to Dawson City on the Klondike Highway, then to Chicken, Alaska via the Top of the World Highway, and finally on to Fairbanks. We're in Yukon, just leaving Whitehorse, heading to uh, Dawson City. All the people stopped. All the people stopped to get one. Uh, $15 for that cinnamon bun. We just came across that bridge down there. Rough road here. It's not quite clear how we go. Oh, there is somebody flagging us through, I see. I see. This is a fairly major detour that we have. We are kind of going down into like a Oh, we just drunk the bottom. About to get on this ferry. It's raining, as you can probably hear, but we're heading over to what we hope will be our campground for the night. Oh dear. <laughs> this was a little adventure that I wasn't expecting to do, but it makes this a little more exciting. It's like they aim high, but they immediately get carried downstream and then they turn up. We are at a very wet campsite this evening at Dawson City. Tom supposedly went down to the river to wash the pan, but I'm wondering if maybe he was panning for gold. During the Klondike Gold Rush from 1896 to 1899, an estimated 100,000 prospectors headed for Dawson City. Only about 30,000 completed the arduous journey, and of those, few actually struck it rich. The town retains the charm and many of the buildings from that era. By far, the people who did the best in the gold rush are, and if you are familiar with the works of capitalism, this will not surprise you, people who already had money. A dance with a dance hall girl would have been a dollar. And 25 cents went to the girl, 75 cents to the house. I have read that a dance hall girl could make uh, $150 a night, uh, gross, in every sense of the word. Um, we are just starting the Top of the World Highway. This will take us to Chicken, Alaska. Oh, there's another car coming. We don't see too many, but there we go. into Alaska. Uh, we're at a beautiful viewpoint and the sun is out and we are happy to be back in the U.S. Only 60 more miles of this and we'll get to Chicken, Alaska. It's raining just enough that we're getting on a slick road again. We're enjoying a nice soak at the Chena Hot Springs about an hour outside of Fairbanks. We're having uh, apple teenies in an ice museum. The glass is made of ice and the museum is also made of ice and we're trying our... Mm. Mm. That's pretty good. Yeah. Oh. The it's glass good. is cold though. The tradition after having your apple teeny inside the ice museum is that you bring your ice glass outside and you make a wish and you smash it on the pavement. You smash it on the ground. This is Kibbit. It is muskox wool. Uh, we're at the University of Alaska Large Animal Research Center and we're going to see some muskox today. You can see the price there. I thought I was reading it wrong initially. 
it's $125 per skein. And the males are pretty aggressive right now and, and kind of growl at you and start walking sideways and rubbing their head against the fence. If they start doing that, it is a sign that you need to take a big step back. Uh, male musk oxen do also have incredibly thick skulls. Uh, male musk oxen skull will be about three inches thick. Uh, and so fun fact, the males actually have smaller brains than the females. In addition to the musk ox, the center also has some reindeer. If you take a caribou and you put it behind a fence, that isn't going to make it a reindeer. Uh, reindeer are a little bit shorter and stockier, uh, and caribou are taller and leaner. Mm -hmm.